With my wife's car now looking a bit grubby, I thought we'd take it from a dirty Tiguan right through to a clean Tiguan and show you each step as I do it. Although this isn't the dirtiest this car's been, it's pretty grubby. Um, this is normal sort of winter conditions, grimy wheels, mud everywhere, um, and actually the engine bay was looking a little bit worse for wear on this car this time, so decided to incorporate an engine bay detail into it as well. Um, stick around, enjoy it. You'll probably need a cup of tea for this one. It's a little bit longer than usual, but you'll enjoy it. So first things first, we'll start with the engine bay. First thing I always do is go around, check for any loose leaves or anything like that that's just gonna go mushy and moist and damp and soggy and horrible with a jet wash. Wasn't that bad actually, because it was not really upon us yet. So next step is to give your engine bay a thorough rinse down. Now the question I always get is, is it safe? Will I kill my car? Oh my god, my battery's still attached, there's plugs, everything like that. As you can see, top right of the image, the big box, is the battery. And then above the battery, you've got plugs and sensors, bits and pieces like that. On a modern day engine, this process is more than safe. Those plugs have two or three weather seals in them normally, and a lot of engines actually don't have undershields, so are exposed to wet weather all the time. This is fine. A little bit of common sense goes a long way. Next, take yourself an all-purpose cleaner. For me, Sienna Gloss Forced. Stronger than your usual APC. What I did, I mixed it down with a little bit of snow foam, not a lot, so it was still a really strong cleaner. And then used a foam gun to apply it to the engine. My thought being with this, Forced is a wonderful cleaner, put for a foam gun, it then gets into places that I can't normally spray it. Force was then allowed to dwell for a couple of minutes as a foam and then topped up with neat products. Now it's interesting. Most people are used to hearing pH balance. This is pH neutral. This won't damage your wax, things like that. This is all well and good when I'm working on the outside of my car, but I'm working on a grubby engine bar. I want a little bit more power. So it sits slightly on the base side of the pH scale at about 12 I believe um, so it is quite a harsh chemical but what am I using it on? I'm using it on high temperature well used and abused plastics it was more than safe and it did a wonderful job at cleaning it. That with the usual wheel cleaning tools a brush a little finger mitt and usually sort of a spoke brush is all you need to get down and dirty and clean your engine bay. Have a watch and give it a go at home. Now, with all of the areas that I could breach 
I was satisfied that this engine was now clean and ready to go into winter. Not only does it give me peace of mind, but it shows when it goes into the garage and the mechanics that work on it at A&A Merc that I care for the car, and I'm sure they'll take that bit more care when they're working on it as well. Now, with all of my agitation done, I've taken the jet wash and I'm giving the engine a quick rinse over again. The first rinse on an engine clean is always more thorough because you're trying to remove as much dirt. The second final rinse is to remove any residue and product. That's all it's for. With that said and done, you just need to get yourself an old microfiber towel, nothing you're too precious about, and whip off the bulk of the water. You could use an air blower here, you could use an airline, but I just thought it'd mix it up and do something that you could do at home on your driveway. An old microfiber towel to remove the bulk of the water. Anyone can do that. Now the reason we're doing this is because of I like to use auto finesse dressel on the engine bay. Dressel itself is a water-based product. So, if I've got pools of water in the engine bay, it means I'm going to dilute the product and I'm not going to get the best look and durability out of the product. Common sense, really. So, you don't have to make the engine bone dry because you're not going to. There's no need to turn it on. Just wipe down the heavily saturated areas and then come back in with Dressel and give everything a good soak down. The thing I like about this product you can spray it anywhere and it looks amazing. There's metal shrouds across the top of the headlight. There's plastic absolutely everywhere, black and clear. There's paintwork in there. There's the foil heat resistant shielding at the back of the engine. Doesn't matter where this product goes. It will soak into what it can soak into. It will run off what it can't and give it about half hour and it looks amazing. The only thing you might need to do is come back and whip over any high spots and level it off. But that's it. Once it's sprayed down and evenly coated all over, close the engine, don't worry. Now, with the engine done, it's time to move on to the next dirtiest area of the car. That's how we work it in detail, and we always do the dirtiest area first, and then slowly come to the cleaner areas. So the engine bay's done. All of that contamination's finished spilling out the side of the wings and the bonnet and the front bumper and all that jazz. Next on to is the wheels. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give them a thorough deep clean with my weekly wheel cleaner of choice at the moment, then, I'll have a little bit of spray sealant on top of that to give them a little bit of protection. But first, as always, give them a heavy rinse down with your pressure washer or your garden hose. That way, your wheel cleaner is biting into the dirtier stuff that's underneath. Now, my weekly wheel cleaner of choice is the Arnagloss Shield. I believe I've said that right. Someone correct me if I haven't. Now, the thing I like about this is it combines what you find in a normal wheel cleaner, so your good alkaline cleaners, with the sodium glyglocalate side of it, and that there is what makes a wheel turn purple. Now you'll notice there's a small amount of that there, but what that's doing in this product is indicating to me where the heavier, grimier, dirtier areas are. The chemical in wheel cleaners and iron fallout removers that actually turns the metal filings purple was first used in the forensics industries and guns and things like that to, to show whether someone had fired a shot. Now I can't remember where I first heard that, that was either Obsessed Garage or it was on Ammo NYC. I believe it's Ammo, I'll credit whoever said it first because of I think they're absolutely genius. So it turning purple is indicating where it is. You then need a good cleaner to go along with that to be able to clean the wheel. And that's what Shield does quite nicely. It's, it's packed with actual wheel cleaners 
as well as the indicators to show me where it is. That teams with a wheel woolly, a good sized detailing brush, and a nice lamb to all finger mitt allows me to effectively clean most wheels safely and securely. Then, once the wheel's clean, a bit of force again on the tyre because it's going to strip off any old tyre dressing and in the wheel arch to remove any mud and salt, I'm happy. That is my wheel cleaning process on a weekly. Now with the wheel now clean inside and out, the tyre clean inside and out effectively and the wheel arch clean, I always take a little bit of aqua coat and give the wheel a spray down. I don't use this on my bodywork because I keep my wax nicely topped up but on the wheel it is so easy and so quick to get some simple protection that will drag you through the winter months if you don't have time to take the wheels off and mint rims them. We'll use a ceramic coating like G Technique or GR. Simple, easy, and effective. How detailing should be. On with the pre wash of the car. Um, I've spoke about Diana Gloss's force previously prior to this section, it's a really intense cleaner. So, on the Tiguan, I'm using it to clean the lower plastics, nothing more. But then on top of that, I'll take a little bit of Avalanche, 800 ml of water, 200 ml of Avalanche and a one litre bowl, just in case you didn't know. I'll then layer that over the top. The force can then work on them really low, grimy, grubby areas that get caked with mud from the road that I live on 
the avalanche can then tackle the contamination that's sat on top of the paint and do its thing there. It's not what I do every week, but in terms of a deep clean, it's nice to be able to layer a good strong pre-wash on your lowers and then foam the uppers. Having let the avalanche sit for about five minutes while I went inside it and ran some buckets of hot warm water, it was rinsed off. Then taken two Microfiber Madness in credit pads, one XL, one standard. The XL always does the uppers, the standard does the lowers. Then three squirts of Adam's car shampoo, and then I always take the credit pads and swirl them and turn them. So you can see that actually the shampoo is mixed into the water before I hit the jet wash. That means that the water and the shampoo is properly diluted. The jet wash then gives me the suds, which is the lubricity side of it. Um, and as always, you get to see my fancy, nice, clear buckets in use, which is the reason I got them, because they're fancy and nothing else. Then I've taken the classic two bucket wash method, one side of the wash mitt, does a section of the car, I can then flip that over, come back, dunk it, soak up a load more soap and go on and do the next thing. So with a double sided wash mitt or wash pad, you can do two sections. One with one side, flip it, one with the other, give it a dunk and carry on. It's as simple as that.
and there you have it. That is why I still use the two bucket wash method with wash pads. That is some dirty wind water. Now, last thing to do was give it a jet wash. Again, just removing any soap residue. Um, now carry away any dirt that's suspended within that residue. Um, during the wash, I'm always checking for any contamination. Is there any tar spots I can see? Do I need to clay bar the car, anything like that? This time round, I was pretty happy with it. Um, I think I will next do that when I go into spring. I've then taken an Aqua Deluxe drying towel and gone round and given everything a good dry prior to polishing. It's not always necessary to clay bar your car every time you detail it in terms of hand polishing. Today I'm hand polishing. If I was machine polishing, take the extra 15 minutes to clay bar the car, but not today. Time wasn't really on my side and actually the car didn't need it, so why do it? Winter protection of choice, Ciara and 845, need I say any more. Microfiber applicator, straight lines, take your time, enjoy it, stay away from the edges. Hand polishing isn't difficult and it isn't hard. I use straight lines because of it's just how I work with car care. If I do straight lines I can avoid swell marks. Other people have other opinions, I don't disagree, it's just how I work. Less is more when you're hand polishing. The polish can only do so much. If you then overload the paint, it's then where hand polishing becomes dusty and grimy and people have bad rep with it. Take your time. Don't use a lot of product and steer clear of your rubbers and things like that and your car will look wonderful. I then opt for a CarPro edgeless towel to buff off with. Really enjoying this towel at the moment. In using it for about six months now um, for buffing polishes and waxes off it's absolutely lovely um, and as you can see from the reflection in the door the paint now looks crisp and clean um, and ready for that layer of wax a layer or two of 845 colonite with a wax mate is what I used on this car and I know that that will do the job for me. I might be able to top it up midwinter, but it's certainly going to get the ball rolling and it's nice and easy. Now, on to some of the finer details. The lower honeycomb grills, a little bit of dressel, not too much, and an old detailing brush. That then allows you to tickle the dressel into all the little nooks and crannies that you might not be able to spray into. You can then get into all of the edges, crevices, things like that. It's just a nice way of getting an even finish. Then, take a microfiber cloth and soak up as much of the residue as you can. There'll be some areas that you can't get all of the residue out of. That's part and parcel. It'll actually soak in. And then I take a little spray of detail spray and a cleaner cloth and just buff the surrounding paintwork. You could do this before you wax the car, so you then clear this up with a wax, but... I like to use the detail spray. It's in the garage, why not use it? The lower trims around the wheel arches and the lower portions of the bumpers were then given a nice even coating of Sienna Gloss Gummy.
their tire and trim restorer. Really quite nice, been playing around with it with scent a bottle to play with. Quite like it actually. Really nice on the tires, but this was the first time I used it on the trim. Went on nicely and soaks in even better. About a week later, it looked wonderful. Then the wiper arm was done, and what I did was a little 50-50, so you could see sort of the before and after. Not heavily aged, but you could still see a clear difference, which was nice. Now, one of my favorite parts of the detail, tires and arches. Um, I love cleaning this Tiguan because of the arches and you've got so much room and I can always clean the suspension parts. They were dressed with auto finesse dresso again, a nice even smattering all the way around. And then some Stiano Gloss Gummy again, um, but this time on a microfiber block. It's how I'm kind of applying tire dressing at the moment. It's working really well for me. Um, loads of ridges and crevices on these tires so work it in in a couple of different motions and you can see you get a nice sheen from this tire dressing it's not over the top but it's not underdressed it's a nice balance i like it maybe you should give it a go Lastly, on any exterior, I always give the glass a clean. Um, use this glass cleaner probably for the last five, six, seven years. Um, work for Nest Crystal. Get a bottle, I don't, I don't need to explain it. The engine was then wiped over to remove any high spots, as I mentioned earlier in the video, and job done. The interior on the car got detailed the week before, hence why there's no footage of that, but yeah, I'm happy. And there you have it. One clean Tiguan ready for winter. My wife was happy because her car's clean. I'm happy because I got to make a good video and hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, be sure to share, like, comment, subscribe and all of that good stuff for more detailing videos in the near future. As always, thanks for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Take care.